What is up, gamers? I've played a lot of the PBE server, about 100 games. I've been playing like 15 games a day since it's been on the PBE, and I think that's a good enough amount of games to have somewhat of an opinion on the new set. So here is my 100 game review of set 11. Now, just a little background for some of you guys who don't know who I am. I have played TFT since set one, and I have played every single set. It's set for 3.0 and 8.0. However, I did play the mid sets of that set. So I feel like I have a good amount of material to have a pretty informed opinion, as well as I have hit Challenger in seven different sets. So I played the game at a very high level, and I've also just like four fun the game a lot. Um, so hopefully I can give a little bit of a balanced opinion. I will obviously be more biased to high levels of play because that is where I play the game and that is what's most important to me. But I'll try to give a little bit more of an overview as well. So let's talk about set 11. The first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about encounters. And so here we are at the encounter screen. So encounters is a new mechanic. So encounters is a brand new mechanic uh, to TFT. They appear at random stages of the game, random rounds of the game. Learn about every encounter in TFT, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, so encounters occur randomly every game. You do know when they occur, like it will be on your on, on the little bar at the top on your round. So you'll be able to see it's a little swirl. So when you're in the game, you'll be able to see it, but you can't pre-plan the match around encounters because you don't know when they'll occur. They could all occur on stage three, um, but so they're, they're pretty random, but it usually doesn't occur that way. So encounters, do I like the mechanic? Do I not like the mechanic? I love the mechanic. I think it's really fun. I think it adds a layer of freshness to every game comboed with portals and encounters. It feels like something you, you, you do have to play around and you have to stay on your toes. And I can imagine some scenarios uh, once we get into ranked grind, that sort of thing, that some of these encounters are like, I'm going to have some tilting experience due to encounters. Like there's one where it like reduces your rerolls or reduces like the amount of gold it costs to push levels. And if I know the encounter is coming on like four, three, but I need to push level, I need to push my level on four, two. And then like, I get the, I get the one where pushing levels doesn't cost as much XP. I can imagine scenarios where that would be a little tilting sometimes, but overall encounters has just added this nice layer of replayability to the game. Every game feels so different and so fresh and like, yeah, what I really like about the mechanic is I'm already kind of envisioning games or metas where like the meta is really stagnant. Let's say we're in a really boring meta, at least boring from my perspective, like a one and two cost reroll meta, something like that, depending on the portal, and the encounter, even if we're in like pretty strict reroll meta or something like that, if the portal and encounter changes the game enough, it could change the game enough to where for that game only, it's a four cost meta. So I can like really see the amount of replayability and the amount of work that went into encounters and comboed with portals can even like save us from stagnant meta sometimes has the potential to do so. So I am a huge fan of this mechanic. It has been nothing but fun to me. A few tilting experiences here and there, but overall, I just think this is like a great thing. It adds replayability and it is super, super, super fun. Now this one, this one, more dog, please get this one out of the game. Jana grants you two Zephyrs. Jesus Christ, please get that one out of the game. They did say they are open to if like all the players really don't like a particular portal, they'll get it out of the game. And let's talk about the Kane one, because I think this is one that people like really misunderstand. At five, at stage five, four, the game ends. Your position then is your final placement. You know on 2-1 that this is occurring. If it's a Kane game, uh, Kane replaces the portal at the beginning of the game. So even something like this that people might think is tilting, you know at the beginning of the game, so you can plan for it. So it's really not that tilting, it just puts a timer on the game. And so you just need to make sure you're in a good spot at 5-4. So yeah, I, I actually really like this one. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, I think it, I don't like super like it, but I do think it is fun. Like, it, you know, it's not, it doesn't tilt me at all. But anyways, encounters, I think is an infinitely more fun mechanic than chosen. Next up, let's talk about units. And from my perspective, units are the most important thing to me for a set. What they look like, like what they do, and just how fun they are to play. That is really the heart of a set for me. And my favorite set of all time is set four. And that's because it had some of the coolest units. Like my favorite unit of all time is Hunter Ash. Behind that is probably Jin. I don't know, Mordekaiser in set set nine was really cool as well. But but you know, like Jin, Riven, Cassiopeia, a set from that set, which set is back in this set. Like I loved those units. And in this set, they actually returned a lot of set, of set four style units and the artwork, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but yeah, just going through here, Ari's a one cost, which is neat. Caitlyn is a reprint from like set six, stuff like that. There's a lot of reprints, but a lot of the reprints are cool. Kha'Zix is kind of a reprint from Chug Chugbug. Koboko is a new unit. Koboko is like a cool stacking mechanic. And you can do some stuff with Fortune, but we'll talk more about Fortune in a bit because it's a little bit of a hot topic. Yasuo is super cool. I love Yasuo being a one cost reroll, and I think his, I think his character looks really cool. 
and he has all all this stuff let's go down to the four and five cost those are the more exciting units i, I actually think there's really, a lot of really cool three costs as well like uh like the return of like three cost tank diana like tank diana carry like titans carry i think everybody enjoys playing that type of unit i'm um, thinking back to like moon man comps and stuff with diana reroll that was when she was a one cost loon is is super core cool. kit is so overloaded but a lot of balance lovers it's not a bad thing there's a lot of balance lovers there Aphelios is super cool it's like a set five version of Aphelios, which is probably the coolest version of Aphelios. It's 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 almost like set five because he's a three cost, but he used to be a four cost. So he's a little bit weaker than the set five version, but super cool. Bard's a really, really, really cool unit because he's like a great mid game unit for hybrid because he's AP and AD. It's a hybrid three cost. It's super cool. Soraka is kind of like a return to a previous version of Soraka where she mana reeves. Very cool. Has like a stacking mechanic and fight and she's an altruist. So very cool combos here. Uh, Tom Kench is like Nunu. So like Nunu, the three cost Nunu reroll. You guys remember like the set seven Dragomancer Nunu. So he's back, but it's in Tom Kinch form now. Tristana is a super cool unit. She's like, she jumps in, she takes damage, but she's a backliner. She's like a really unique backliner. At first, when they first released her, she was an assassin, but they changed her targeting. And anyways, it's one of my favorite units to play. Volibear is that dude. I love Volibear. He's like a tank and a DPS. Like you can itemize him in so different ways. He's like the king of stage two. Uh, we'll see what happens with him later, but I think it's such, such a cool unit. A lot of cool three costs. Uh, going into the four costs, Ash is very similar to Hunter Ash, my favorite unit of all time. Not nearly as cool because she doesn't like get tanky throughout the fight. I mean, she's a little tanky. She gets damage reduction, but still a very cool unit. We'll see. Kaisa, dude. Okay, so with the four costs, they did such a good job on just like hitting dude like just jamming you with dopamine like kaisa is so satisfying when you watch her shoot her ability just so you guys will see her in game whenever you guys play her super 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 satisfying with her ability i mean the other one that's really satisfying with her ability is Syndra, dude like the Syndra is like oh my god so she's like ari from last set so she's like the kind of stall ap carry and man dude she just she just stacks up her orbs and just oh god it's so satisfying so so many satisfying units like i just have so much fun playing a lot of these Silas is basically like a reprint from set four Riven, which is like one of the best units of all time. Morgana is a reprint from set four. I love playing that unit as well. Uh, Kane's pretty cool. Lee Sin's pretty cool. Annie and Galio are solid tanks. You know, they're just cool. Lily's okay. Orn's super cool. He creates a temporary item each round. Very tanky. And then the legendaries are awesome. So Azir is a lot like he was in set five or set four. Um, he summons a soldier. He doesn't deal damage with the soldier, but he deals damage another way. So he's kind of like that guy you can plug and play to get more frontline, even though he's a backliner. Very similar to set, set four version. Huey is super, super, super cool. Aurelia is so cool. Like, I don't I, I, you guys just see the gameplay. Lissandra's there's people in the teapot. Like, it's, it's in farms loot. Super cool. Set is just a reprint from set four sets. But instead, you have to like kind of invest into him to get more damage. His, his little squatting thing at the beginning round, super cool. Wukong, like, rotates through his ability, so cool. And U this dude's, this Udyr dude is really cool when you're the Udyr player, but I, I can already tell this unit is going to be so tilting. It's the end of the regular set. He's kind of like an assassin because he just jumps into your back on immediately. So I think these units are awesome. And then along with the units, let's talk about the artwork. So the artwork is another strong point of this set. And it's one of the big reasons why I love set four so much. So it's definitely... It's taken a lot, a lot of stuff from set four. I mean, Riot is very aware that most people's favorite set is set four. It's for people who just really don't like Chosen. I don't like Chosen either, but like, I feel like nobody can say that the units weren't amazing in set four and the artwork wasn't amazing. So that's something they brought back was the units. They reprinted so many units from set four and kind of modernized them for modern TFT. And then the aesthetic, like the East Asian style aesthetic, which I think is so, so, so cool, has been added back into the game. I just think it's awesome. Now, the one downside to the artwork, and you will definitely feel this once you start playing. I definitely felt this. I was like, who the fuck are these units? Like, I was like, this is Rex. Who the fuck is this? Like, like who is who, who is this? Like, who is Aphelios? Like, what is happening? Like, Diana, who the fuck is this? Like, their skins are so hard to tell who they are. Like, Thresh is human Thresh. Like, Volibear is a tiger. Like, what is happening? So, that's something that is like might be a little bit annoying and a little bit overwhelming right when you get into it. And I, oh, I, I can never tell the difference between Lilia and Nico, if I'm being honest. That's a, like a little bit like you're like, bro, who are these units? But after you play like 20 or so matches, then then you know what all the units are and then you can really appreciate the artwork. So it's a little overwhelming at first, uh, just knowing which units are which. But once you do, I think you'll really, really, really appreciate the artwork. I right, was talk a little bit about the traits here. So I think there's a lot of new and cool traits. We'll come back and talk about Fortune and Exalted in a bit. But there's a lot of cool new traits and a lot of the returner ones like Dragon Lord is just Tempest from set seven, essentially. Dryad is probably the worst trait in the game, but we'll see how it works out. Heavenly is a lot like Guild, so it's like a returning 
one that's cool. Mythic is kind of like Warlords of the past, but a little bit easier to use. Ink Shadow is like really cool. You get extra items. Kind of reminds me of like the the, the Swain thing. I, I, don't, I don't remember. The, the Swain one where you copy items kind of reminds me of that a little bit because they were red. I forget what set that was, set seven maybe. A Story Weaver is the new like summoning traits like cultists and those sort of things. But this one's neat because it's a backline summon. So that's kind of neat but there. Umbral's kind of whatever and, and all the good stuff. So there's a lot of cool like you know, very intuitively to use traits. Ghostly is pretty cool. And then a lot of the, a lot of the other traits, like, uh, I forget what they're called. There's like origins and then there's the synergies or whatever, but the, they like offensive parts of, of their, you know, like the stat, the stat parts of their, of their thing. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Duelist and shit like that. These are all like returners. So you don't have to rewind a lot of stuff like sniper. That's a returning mechanic. All altruist is kind of new, but it's pretty simple to understand. Arcanus, just a direct reprint. Artist is Hue's base thing. Uh, Behemoth, standard resist trait. Bruiser, obviously, everybody should know what that does. Duelist is back, gaining attack speed. Exalted, we'll talk about in a bit because that's a new mechanic. And then, like, Invokers returns. Uh, Reapers is sort of like the assassin trait. It gives you crits, but, you know, it doesn't make you jump or anything. But all these abilities, all these units kind of have like a jumping, uh, a couple of them have like jumping abilities. Sage is like, what is that one? The one that was strategist, like strategist. Uh, trick shot is like trick shots in the past. And then wardens is like the, the damage, the flat damage, which is kind of like the cavalier trait of this set. Uh, so I think this stuff is really, really, really intuitive to understand. And after you just play some matches, I think it's really understand, understand these traits and the trait webs and combination. There's a lot of three trait units. And so I think comp flexibility is going to be very high in this set. Okay, let's talk about the economy traits because this, I definitely, in in like the general community, I think this will be more of a controversial topic to talk about. But in the high UO community, I do not think this should be controversial at all. I think if you hold the opinion that fortune should be a powerful mechanic in high UO, I just think you hold the wrong opinion, flat out, straight up. Like, sorry, not sorry. I, I just think you're wrong if you think that like fortune should be something that should be played a lot in high UO. I just think you're wrong. So fortune has been designed to have a it heavily penalizes you, heavily penalizes you if you ever went around. And there's a lot of RNG involved in the thing. You have to roll a die to kind of see your cash out. So they de they just designed this to be for fun and for it to be something you play in high elo, maybe 1% of your games. Um, I'm sure there'll be some patches where that is not true. And I'm sure they'll, you know, they might do some changes to it or whatever. But a specific design intention, if you watch their rundown, was they said, we do not want people to play this a lot in high and we want this to be like very special or something that you do for fun and low you for casuals and i think it is the best way to have a like a huge econ trait like this so my opinion on econ traits in high uo is that and i i feel like this is really not up for debate honestly this is just the way that it is every single set once once this is optimized once the economy trait is solved if any of the lines within those uh, within the within the traits is viable it becomes the best way to play every single patch uh so for, what i mean by this is like like last set and set 10 if 80 carries were viable at all if ezreal or caitlin was viable or if lucian or whatever if any of those were viable if 80 flex was viable at all then the heart steel player is at a massive advantage and if you are presented with heart steel you have to play it or you're just like you're just kneecapping yourself and that's how like every single economy trade is if you get the economy trait once you once you figure out how to use it once the meta has been solved once the game has been established and, and you have a large knowledge base a large database the best way to play is always to play the economy trait no matter what if it's presented to you you don't just force into it all the time so i love that this was designed as something that you do not want to play in high UO, and i hope it stays that way because i, I think I don't think it's like fun or interactive for anybody. It's just like, okay, I got, I got the economy trade. I guess I win this game. Oh, I just got, I, that guy just cashed out. And then I face him and I rotate into him as he spikes. I guess I just fucking lose 20 health this round on stage four. Awesome. Awesome game. So I don't like that. All right, next up, we're going to talk about Exalted. So Exalted is your team gains 2% bonus damage and then it, you gain more per level. So it's something that you splash in late games, kind of like Jazz. Uh, for that splash in the late game but after each combat you store one xp in a soul core sell the soul core to claim the xp you can just sell it every turn or you can just leave it there to stack um, this is intentionally designed so that if you want if you're running exalted and you'd like to re-roll you can just leave it there and then once you spike your comp you could sell and you could push a level so it's kind of cool it, it puts all the power into the player's hands which i really like and as you can notice there are no units down here because exalted rotates every game now it's not completely random well it's random which what what units it rotates to but it rotates to a already preset set of units so it's not like the units in there won't always be random it, it is a 
predetermined set of them. Like it'll be like if, you know, I don't know if I'm describing it, but I think you get it. Anyway, so it's what I really like about Exalted. It's like a little puzzle I have to solve every game and I have to decide whether it's worth running. Now, obviously there's going to be a times when like I like can high low, obviously like you get the perfect drop. Like if one of the Exalted units is Aphelios and then the other ones are one cost or something like that and you get the Aphelios drop, obviously you get a big advantage there, but hey, isn't that fun? We have a game of variance, so... Obviously, that's once the game is really optimized, that's going to be a thing. Like, he just started the game with Exalted. This is bullshit. He's playing from Ugly. You know, obviously, that's going to happen. But other than that, it feels like a puzzle I have to solve every game. And I have to like, kind of figure out if it's worth running. And when I'm building like my late game comps, when you can actually get the bonus, when you, when you, when it feels like you can get like Jazz bonus, once you're like level uh, nine and level 10, you're getting like plus 13% bonus damage to your whole team like that's that's a pretty significant buff you have to kind of decide is it worth for me to like splash in these exalted units if they're like cheap not very good units or do i like swap them out for like legendary one stars and stuff like that so I, it creates a little puzzle to have to solve every game and i think it's like super fun and adds a lot adds a big layer of replayability to it so with all that out of the way what is my verdict on the set is this going to be an awesome set how like this could be the best set ever or should you just skip this set like what's going on with this and before i give my opinion my final opinion, one last thing I want to say is, just to give you guys an overview, I am not one of those people who is like, always thinks every set is going to be the best set ever. I am an optimist by default. And what I mean by that, I've, I, I would call myself like a realistic optimist. If there is a choice, if there's a 50-50 or even like 60-40 in the negative, if, if I can choose to be optimistic or pessimistic, I choose optimism because I don't see the point in like leaning into the negatives and like seeing like actively seeking the failure or something like that. Like I look for the positives. I look for the positive sides, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just a blind follower. Like when set 10 came out, I was like, this set looks really cool. I like the theme. You know, I think they did a lot of cool branding. I think, uh, I think some of the unit design and stuff like that is very interesting, very fun, very cool. But I was like, oh, but this set mechanic, you know, I think chosen was already solved. Uh, you know, I kind of like how they changed headliner a little bit, but you know, I think this thing's already solved and this could be the pain point of the set. And it was so, with that all said, set 11. The only reason why I'm prefacing that is because I don't have any problems with set 11. I don't see anything from the design standpoint that would lead me to think that this set is anything, has anything but potential to be the best set of all time. Flat out. I, I don't see anything taking it down as long as the devs can execute on a, on a, on a good balance plan and, 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 and can make some good patches. Like as long as the game, it doesn't devolve into something really degenerate because of, you know, poor balance. Like, I don't think, don't see anything taking, taking this set away. So as long as the devs can execute on good balancing, this is, this has all the potential in the world to be the best set of all time. And that that's going to be a position I hold until proven otherwise. I, I, for everything I said in this video, everything from a design perspective just seems awesome. And I have no glaring problems. Could it be better? Maybe. Could it be worse? Absolutely. But I, I am, I am very optimistic on this being the best set of all time. So anyways, what do you guys think so far? Obviously, probably most of you have not played nearly as much as I have, but for those of you who feel really negative about the set, just off of playing 10 games or watching a little bit of gameplay, just give it a chance, man. Play play 100 games or so, or if you don't have that time, play 20 games or so, and, and then and then give an opinion. I guess I think this set is really worth playing, and I'm really, really excited to grind and you know push for some high ranks this set. So uh, put your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.